So, thank you very much also to the organisers from Matthew Dawn for inviting us here to give this talk. It's my first time in Bangkok. So, I'm going to talk today about human genetic disorders with defects in repair of DNA damage by ultraviolet light from the sun. So, this is very similar to the slide that Keith Caldicott showed, where you can see all the different types of DNA damage generated by a number of sources. And the ones that I'm going to be talking about today is damage generated by ultraviolet light, which causes cross-linking of two pyrimidines in the same DNA strand, produce what are called pyrimidine dimers. So there are two different types, cyclobutane pyrimidine dimers and six more photoproducts. So this is the number of human genetic disorders associated with defects in DNA, different DNA repair processes. So I'm going to talk about the top three here, which associated with defects in repair of ultraviolet light. You heard from Keith about AOA1 and SCAN1, and these are a number of different disorders worked, worked on by a number of groups and several of them in the Genome Center at the University of Sussex. And you can see in many cases, these disorders are cancer prone. In several cases, they're also associated with neurological degeneration, as Keith alluded to. They're also, in many cases, associated with premature aging. So DNA repair is very important for protecting us from cancer, protecting us from neurodegeneration, sorry, and for keeping us young. So this again is the same picture that you've just seen. And here, what I've listed is a number of disorders caused by deficiencies in these different repair processes. So here are the disorders caused by problems in single strand break repair. These are caused by disorders in nucleotide excision repair, which I'm going to talk in more detail about, and a number of different disorders caused by deficiencies in repairing double strand breaks, repairing mismatches, and with altered DNA damage signaling. So the three I'm going to talk about are xeroderma pigmentosum, trichothiodystrophy, dystrophy, and cocaine syndrome. And stop here are examples of each one. Here's xeroderma pigmentosum, trichothiodystrophy, dystrophy, and cocaine syndrome. And what I want you to notice is that xeroderma pigmentosum, or XP, is very different from TTD and CS. And I'll be going on to discuss this in more detail a little bit later. So this is a textbook picture of patients with xeroderma pigmentosum taken from a 1974 paper from the NIH where you can see all the features of XP. So the first indications are abnormal freckling and then you see areas of increased pigmentation, decreased pigmentation in some individuals, very severe sun sensitivity and if unprotected, multiple skin cancers from which the patients used to die. Down here you can see some patients also have neurological abnormalities. And the clue to the nature of the disease comes from what you can see here. Areas of the body that are never exposed to sunlight, you see no skin abnormalities at all. So all these skin lesions that you see are associated with exposure to ultraviolet light from the sun. So that's just summarized here, acute sun sensitivity, but as I'll indicate later, not in all patients, atrophy and dryness, freckling, increase and decrease pigmentation, and multiple skin cancers which have been estimated to occur at about 2,000 times the normal incident. And all these are the result of sun exposure. The neurological abnormalities seen in about 20% of the individuals are mental retardation, microcephaly, progressive degeneration which is caused by neuronal loss. And the incidence in Europe has been estimated at something like 2 per million live births. In Japan it's much more frequent, something like 1 in 20,000. So the defect in DNA repair in XP was first identified many years ago, actually 1968, that's 45 years ago by James Cleaver. And so it's been worked on a lot by many groups over the intervening years. So this is a summary of the molecular and cellular features that have been deduced. 
So as you can see, hypersensitivity to killing and mutagenesis by ultraviolet light, and I'm now talking about cultured cells taken from the skin of the unaffected skin of these individuals. In the majority, about 80%, the defect is in the process of nucleotide excision repair, which I'll go into in more detail in a moment, of UV photo products and other bulky damage. There are seven complementation groups. This means a defect in any one of seven genes called XBA to XBG can result in the disorder. And as I'll go on to show you, the products of these genes encode three damage re recognition proteins, two nucleases, and two helicases. And about 20% of XPs, the so-called XP variants, are not deficient in this process, but they are defective in replication of damaged DNA. And although I've spent a lot of my working life working on XP variants in this process, I'm not going to talk about them today. I'm going to stick with the ones that are deficient in nucleotide excision repair. So this is the nucleotide excision repair pathway. And this is meant to indicate a UV photo product in DNA. And there are two branches of this pathway that are concerned with the initial recognition. The one I'm going to talk about in detail first is global genome repair. The first step involves finding this damage, recognition. And this is carried out by, or requires both XPE, that's the product that's defective in, in individuals who've got a mutation in the XPE gene, and the XPC protein together with its partner protein called HR23B. The next stage involves a protein complex called TF2H, which I'll tell you a lot more about later, but for the time being, the important aspect is that TF2H contains two more XP proteins, XPB and XPD. These are both DNA helicases, and their job is to open out this damaged structure to allow later steps to take place. Then we recruit XPG and XPA, XPA, the function of XPA is to check that there really is damage there and that everything, all the other proteins are in the correct place for the final step in this incision process, which is breaking the DNA on the three prime side of the damage by the XPG protein and on the five prime side of the damage by the XPF protein and its partner called ERCC1. So what I particularly want you to notice at this point that the XPC and XPE proteins are required for global genome repair, but they're not required for this other branch of the pathway called transcription coupled repair, which is a rapid process for removing damage from actively transcribed regions of DNA, which I'll tell you more about later. But it's important to note that XPE and XPC are not needed for transcription coupled repair, whereas all the other XP proteins are needed for both branches of the pathway, which converge at this point here. So at this point, we've cut the DNA on either side of the damage. We can now remove a section of about 28 nucleotides containing the damage, leaving this gap. The gap can then be filled by DNA polymerases and accessory factors using the opposite strand as template. And the final step is joining the newly synthesized piece of DNA to the old DNA using a DNA ligase. So this repair synthesis step would be deficient if any of the XP proteins were missing. So if any of the XP proteins are missing, you can't get to the stage of chopping out the damage, so you can't fill it in. And so we use this as a convenient cellular diagnostic test for XP. So for the last 30 or so years in the UK, and in fact anywhere in the world, individuals, um, clinicians have sent us skin biopsies or fibroblast cultures from individuals who they think may have XP, and we've then carried out a DNA repair test in the lab to either confirm or exclude the diagnosis. And I'll show you a couple of examples. So the technique we use for measuring repair synthesis is referred to as UDS, which stands for Unscheduled DNA Synthesis. So what we're plotting here is the amount of repair synthesis against UV dose. 
and you can see in a normal control you get an increased amount of repair synthesis with increased UV dose. This individual clearly does not have XP because the response is normal, whereas this individual clearly does have XP because the repair synthesis, the UDS level, is very low. Here's another example, normal control and three cases of XP where the UDS is completely deficient. So, how do we relate to the molecular defect to the clinical features? Defective repair of UV damage or in effect inefficient replication of damage results in increased UV mutagenesis and you can show this in the lab as well. This increased mutation frequency results in skin pigmentation changes and skin cancers obviously taking place in the appropriate skin cells. Increased UV cell killing causes the erythemal response, the severe sunburn that many XP patients show. And the neurological problems, which I'm going, going to tell you about in more detail, which are never found in XP, E, C or V, are thought to be caused by accumulation of unrepaired DNA damage in the central nervous system. So about three years ago, in London we obtained funding, this was led by my dermatology colleague Dr. Robert Sarkany, he obtained funding to set up a multidisciplinary specialist clinic to see XP patients. So one day every two weeks, every alternate Friday, we see at this clinic just four or five XP patients, they spend the whole day in the clinic where they're examined by all these different specialists who really have become experts in XP and can improve, as you'll see, <coughs> treatment and management. So this was established in 2010 and we've seen 70 XP patients in the clinic who we now see on a regular basis. Probably this represents about three quarters of the total XP population in the UK. So before this clinic was established, I hadn't met many patients, I'm not a clinician, I'm a molecular biologist and I had skin samples from many patients but I'd never actually seen them. And I thought naively that I knew pretty much everything there was to know about XP. But when this clinic started and we began to see patients, I discovered that I actually knew very little about XP and I just want to show you some or two in details of some of, some of the interesting patients. So here's some general observations that we've made from the clinic. So XB, ABD, F and G, so these are the ones that are deficient in both transcription coupled repair and global genome repair, usually have neurological problems. This has been known for many years, whereas XBC, E and the variant form never have neurological problems. So this was well known. What wasn't well known was that these same groups usually have acute sunburn, so when they go out in the sun or when they go out just on a dull day, they get acute sunburn within a very short space of time. Whereas these groups here never show any sunburn at all, they don't show acute sunburn. So this has important consequences. So in XPC, for example, the first symptoms are unusual freckling from the age of two. Unusual freckling is a much less obvious clinical feature than severe sunburn. So it's much more difficult to diagnose. With the XB E and V, they don't have any symptoms until much later. So paradoxically, the more severe groups, these ones here, they have severe sunburn, but as a consequence, they're diagnosed very early and they can be protected very early. Whereas, and so they don't tend to get that many skin cancers whereas the so-called milder group are not protected until diagnosis, which generally happens somewhat later, so they've already accumulated quite a lot of sun damage, and so they suddenly get lots of cancers. So here are two patients of XPC. So XPC involved in damage recognition in global genome repair, but not involved in transcription coupled repair. And here you can hopefully see the typical freckling. This girl was diagnosed fairly early when she was about three years old and has been pretty well protected since then. 
whereas this lady spent her first five years in the Yemen before she was diagnosed when she came to the UK, and so she accumulated a lot of damage in the first five years, even though she was well protected when she was diagnosed, age about eight years old, and spent the rest of her life in the UK. You can see lots of skin damage all over her, many freckling and many lesions. So XPC in the UK, no neurological problems, no sunburn sensitivity, and because of the later onset of symptoms, more skin lesions later on. So early diagnosis is very difficult, but it's very important. Now I want to show you XPD. So XPD is one of the groups that's in defect, that's involved in both transcription coupled repair and global genome repair. And it's part of this TF2H complex involved in opening out the structure. So here's a young man, age 13, had swelling and erythema on minimal sun exposure when he was only three months old. So he has got a number of solar lentigenes, these are freckle-like appearances on his skin, and he's also developing neurological problems, ataxic gait, slurred speech and bilateral heat of hearing loss but he's been pretty well protected, so his skin's in rather good condition. And please note the, the mutation arginine 683 to tryptophan, which I'll be mentioning quite a lot. Here's another young man, severe erythema at just 10 days, and he was diagnosed very early, so he's got hardly any lesions on his skin, but he's got very severe neurological problems. And he's also got this mutation, arginine 683 to tryptophan. Here's a lady who, although she was diagnosed quite early because again she had easy sunburn at three months, when she was a teenager she wanted to go out with her friends so she wasn't very well protected and you can see that she's got lots of skin damage, pretty much like the textbook pictures that I showed you earlier on. She 